and got out their notes. Okay. So parametric equations, like Miranda said, it makes you sound smart, right? We know how to do parametric equations. They are they are kind of fun. The application we're gonna do today is remember when we did all those crazy um we used this equation, the height actually would be h, not that, but we used this earlier, well, we used an X too. I'm not doing very well here. Remember, remember that? Okay, we did throw up problems. You threw the ball up and you wanted to see how long till it came back down. I know, I, projectile problems, some teacher calls them. I like just call them throw up problems, okay. All right, but this 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 equation only works if you're throwing the ball straight up how many times do you throw something straight up in the air <laughs> okay most of the time if you're throwing or kicking or hitting a ball or something it's moving at an angle to the ground it is not moving straight up into the air right so those are the applications we're going to get to in a little bit Here's a different application of why you might need a parametric equation. This is kind of cool. It says, these are the number of wolves on an island. These are the number of rabbits, okay? And then this is the relationship between the two. You will see here, like at year four, there's a lot of wolves. And what's happening to the rabbit population? The bigger the number of wolves gets, the number of rabbits are serving as dinner. All right. So... It's if you graph the number of wolves as compared to the number of rabbits at any point in time. So here, the fourth dot would be 15 wolves and 40 rabbits. So 15 wolves and 40 rabbits is this dot right here. They graphed them all and it's kind of a cyclical pattern as one increases, the other decreases and so on, okay? We're gonna do this with Another use is we talked about the vertical distance something travels, it goes up and comes back down. We did the equation we just talked about, all right? When we did that, the horizontal distance that it covered, if we had thrown something, it would have gotten further and further away from us. But now we're going to talk about when something has an angle to it, we're going to talk about it in terms of time, okay? So if Two seconds after we threw it, the object was 80 meters away horizontally and roughly 80 meters high. So two seconds in, it's about 80, 80 or something. Doesn't really look like 80, 80 on this graph, but um, we're going to combine these two into one idea using time as a third variable. Now, that's the whole idea of parametrics, is that you're going to have two equations that relate x and y to a third variable. For our applications, we're going to use t, and it's going to mostly be time, okay? But the whole idea of parametrics is going to be in t, and there's going to be a mode in your calculator, and it's going to use the variable t. Okay. Not as bad as it sounds. First of all, this says um, for parametric equations, you can now determine where an object was at a given time, and you can determine both its horizontal and vertical distance away from you. So at time zero, this object was at 0, 040. At time two, this was at 81 feet away from us and 61 feet in the air. T is called the parameter. All right. See these little arrows, which are very hard to see from your seat probably, but there are little arrows on this path. Might be able to see. I don't know if there's not one on your sheet, is there? The little arrows indicate it started over here and it landed over here. That means we're going to put ar arrows on our curves and they indicate the orientation or the path that it followed from time zero until time four. We're going to have an interval for our T's most of the time and they're going to tell us exactly what t interval to use all right so again the definition of parametric is just 
it's an x equation in terms of t and a y equation in terms of t. So you don't have this example, so you get to just look up here. The important things, they gave us an x equation in terms of t, they gave us a y equation in terms of t, and they defined t, the interval of t, to be only from negative 4 to 4, okay? So then we made a little chart that went negative 4 to positive 4. Do you see those values of t going down here? Then how do you think they found these x and y numbers? So they put negative 4 in here and got negative 4 squared is 16 plus 5 is 21. And then they put negative 4 in this one. Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2 plus 4 is 2. Okay? So they put each of these t values into the x to find all the x's and into the y rule to find all the y values. And then they plot only the x and y values. So this started at 21, 2, went over 21 and up 2, started right here. Then it went to 14, 2.5, which was here. So it was going this way. There's a little arrow there to indicate that. They kept plotting all the points. It formed a sideways parabola and wound up with an end point over here at 21, 6. We are going to have end points today. As long as the t interval is defined, there will be a beginning and an ending point. What did we just draw that we could never draw before on our calculator? A sideways parabola, which is not a function. Yes, it fails the vertical line test. The only way we could have drawn that in the past was maybe to draw this branch and say it's positive, this branch and say it's negative, and then we'd get the parabola but otherwise you can't do it on the calculator. So the whole point is here we drew something that was not a function. All right, here we go. Ready? Let's try one. Here's the x rule. It says our rule for x is going to be negative 3 plus 4t, or 4t minus 3. I'm going to write it that way. Do this guy by hand, okay? This, the rule for y is we're going to take the t and square it and add 3. Now, the T is filled in for you already, but this is where it comes from. This is a huge issue. Students will bring their calculator up in the middle of the test and say, I don't know what T values I'm supposed to use. I don't know what my T window is. It's part of the question. Does everybody see what I'm talking about here? From negative 3 to 4. So if we were doing this on the calculator, the min would be negative 3 and the max would be 4 for T. All right, values are here. I'm going to plug them in real quick. 4 times, put this t value in, minus 3. What do we get? Negative 15. Put in a negative 2 and we get negative 11, negative 7, negative 3. One, five, nine, and 13. It is linear. See the rule up here, 4t minus 3, so it should have been going up by a constant value of how much? 4, because it had a slope of 4. Does everybody see that part was linear? So once we did a few, we could have figured out the pattern and just filled them in quick. All right, this is different. This is not linear. It's squared, so we're going to have to use our brains. There is a pattern eventually. You square negative 3, and you get 9 plus 3 is 12. Am I doing okay? Negative 2 squared would be 4, plus 3 is 7. Negative 1 squared is 1, plus 3 is 4. 0, 3. Now, when you square 1, you get the same thing as you did when you squared negative 1, right? So it starts going back 4, 7, 12, and then 16 plus 3 is 19. All right, what do we plot? The x and y only. So our endpoints are going to be at negative 15, 12. And what's the other endpoint, guys? 13, 19 at the other end. Now, as you draw this, kind of keep track of where you start and where you end so that you can put those orientation arrows on, okay? Now, I'm going to give you a couple minutes to try to plot these because these this graph paper is horrible for my bifocals. So I'm just going to do my best if it doesn't match what it should be just don't tell me okay let me think i can see because i'm
All right, how'd I do? Did you at least get the same shape as me? I'm not sure I plotted those super accurately. Everybody okay? The orientation makes sense? The way you would put the directional arrows going? Any questions? All right, now, what did we get this time? We got a piece of a parabola again, right? That parabola has an equation that only has an X and a Y, right? Every parabola has an equation that could be written in terms of X and Y. So the next thing it's going to talk about is how to solve and put that equation back into XY form. What you're going to do is you're going to eliminate one of the parameters. You're going to solve one of them for T and substitute it into the other one. And it really doesn't matter which one, though I will tell you most of the equations on the worksheet, it asks for in Y equals form. So let me do this example, and then we're going to do that one. It said here, for this example 2, x equals 4t minus 2. So if I want the t by itself, I would add the 2 and then divide by 4. Does that seem okay to everybody? And then I'm going to substitute that into the other equation for the t so that I have y equals x plus 2 over 4 squared plus 1. And I would really be okay with that. Because we have a quiz tomorrow where that's not a form that's going to work for us, I'm going to rearrange that, but you don't have to. You can just leave that answer. If we were rearranging that a little bit, we, oh my goodness, but I write a little more crooked. Yikes. Um, we could take out the 4 squared is a 16, so it's a 1 16th because it's in the denominator. So there's vertex form right there. I really don't care. I'm just reviewing some things here. If you subtracted the 1 over to the other side, you'd have x, y minus 1 equals, and if you left the x plus 2 over here squared, how would you move that guy? Multiply by 16 over here. And that ties into what we were doing yesterday and last week, 4P, Y minus K, X minus H squared. Okay, just trying to tie that back together. But bottom line, we just did one back here on this problem. Let's see if we can come up with the equation of that one. Can we do that? What's this going to look like when we get the T by itself over here? x plus 3 divided by 4, and then we're going to put that where? So we'll have y equals x plus 3 squared over, or over 4 squared plus 3. And it's fine. You can leave it like that. If I took the 4 and I squared it, I'd get 16. So I could pull it out as a 1 16th. What do you know about that equation right there? Where's the vertex? <coughs> Negative 3, 3. Okay. Do you remember vertex form? Does that look right for this? Negative 3, 3. Does that look like about where we hit a vertex? Okay. Just making sure that it made sense. And the 1 16th actually made it fat, right? And wasn't that a pretty wide open parabola? All right. Moving on. I'm going to do one more by hand with you. I would like you to try this one by hand. I don't have a lot of room. I'm going to write over here. What are the values we're going to put in for T? Yes, negative 4. And I'm going to go fast. You could really, like, even skip numbers. It just won't make as smooth of a curve. It's just trying to get you an idea what it looks like. And the rule for x is to do what? t squared plus 4. So if I square that, I get 16 plus 4 is 20. 
9 plus 4 is 13. Squared is 4 plus 4 is 8. 1 squared is 5, 4, and then I think we're going back again, right? 8, 13, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 20. All right, and the rule for y is a little messier. It says take t, divide it by 2, and then subtract 3. So negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2, minus 3 is negative 5. Negative 3 divided by 2 is negative 1.5. Can we just use decimals? Minus 3 is negative 4.5. Anybody get what's happening yet? Negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. Minus 3 is negative 4. Is this linear, guys? Half an x minus 3. It's, it's actually going up by a half, which means it's getting less negative by a half. So we'd have negative 3.5. Negative 3, negative 2.5, negative 2, negative 1.5, and uh, did I skip one? Okay, so when I put a 4 in, I get 2 minus 3 is negative 1, right? Everybody okay? So where are the endpoints? Okay, when we go to plot it, we're plotting only which numbers? The x, y ordered pairs, right? So over 20 down 5. Okay, what do we got going on here? It's counting by 2's going across, but 1's going down, right? Okay, so 20 negative 5 is here. Eight, negative four. Make sure you're thinking about your orientation here. Your arrows are going to kind of go left to right on this branch, right? No, right to left. I know my directions, just not well. I'm so lost. Where am I at? Five, negative 3.5. Four, negative three. 5, negative 2.5. I think we're doing a sideways parabola. What do you think? 8, negative 2. 13, negative 1.5. And 20, negative 1. Okay, so it started at the bottom, went back towards the left and then around to the top, yes? Everybody okay? Ready to be done with all this by hand calculating and let your calculator do it? All right, this is what I need you to do. I need you to turn your calculator on and go to the mode button. There are two things I need you to do, please. Can you make sure it's in degrees? Because that's going to help with our application problem later, and we won't have to go back and check. And then I need you to be in parametric mode. Just a little announcement kind of here. Do you see it goes function, and then it's P-A-R, that's parametric. P-O-L is polar. S-E-Q is sequence. Within the next month, we're going to do all three of those parametric polar and sequence okay you're going to be geniuses now if you look at this button right down here do you notice it had four things written on it guess what when you're in function mode that button gives you an x when you're in parametric mode that button gives you a t later when we go to polar mode it's going to give us a theta and when we're in sequence mode it's going to give us an n you never knew before why that button had all that writing on it right okay now, go to y equals, and what happens now when you go to y equals? Yeah, it says x, the equation number one for x in terms of t and y in terms of t, and then it goes on to equation two, etc. 
Everybody see where we are? Anybody's not working yet? All right. So for this question, we're supposed to put into x t divided by 2. So we use that key, that x key, t divided by 2. And then we go to the y, and what do we type? Square root of t, and then arrow to the right with a plus 2 that's not underneath the radical. Everybody okay? Uh, not in college. <laughs> we won't talk about why. <laughs> I got my first graphing calculator in 88 and had no idea how to use it. It was a Casio. Um, my fiance at the time was dating, was, was, it, he was dating someone else. He was in, he was in California and saw this graphing calculator thing and thought it was something a math teacher should have. And I had no idea what to do with it. So no, when I was in college, I was already teaching. I'd been teaching for two or three years. So didn't have a calculator. All right. Go to window. Go to window. What are we going to put for our T, min, and max? Have you gotten that idea yet? Zero to nine. Perfect. Zero and nine. And that came from right here on this problem. Everybody's okay? Okay. Now, T step is it? Yes. Go, it has to be in float mode. Somehow yours is not. Okay. It's rounding. All right. Here where it says T step, guys, this is a huge issue. Everybody needs to put a point one there and just leave it. We're going to use point one all the time, and I'll talk about this later. The calculator doesn't know what to do with three variables, so it calcul it just plugs in numbers starting at zero by point one, and it makes a curve. But if you tell it to count by fives from zero to nine, how many points is it going to find? It's going to put in zero, and then it's going to put in five, and it's going to connect it with a straight line. Okay. If you put in point zero 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 one. Your calculator is going to calculate a thousand values before it moves from zero to one, and it's going to take forever. Okay, so leave it at point one. Now, I, I'll show you in a minute. Now, for the y, the x, I'm just going to look at my graph paper. It goes like negative two to I don't know. I'm going to go ten. How's that? And my y min, I'm going to go negative 2 to 10, just because it looks like what might fit on the graph paper. Normally, you'd have to fiddle around and see what fit. Okay, then I'm going to hit graph. How's that look? Did you catch which way the orientation was going? Went kind of left to right, yes? All right. Um, right. I'll show you just for fun. If you skipped and you put a 5 here instead of a Look, you just get a straight line, okay, because it only connects two dots. If you want to be crazy and put something little here, I'm only going to do a hundredth because you'll see it takes a long time just with a hundredth. If you do 0 0.0001, you'll be here all day, okay? Do you see it's calculating very, very, very slowly? All right, what, what I want you to do is to figure out if your table is set up appropriately. Can you go to second window and make sure it's on auto auto? Is it on auto auto, guys? Okay. Then go to second graph and there's the table is all set up. Okay. Um is yours counting by point fives for T or point ones? Okay, it doesn't really matter. Usually I thought it counted by what your T press plus for change of table. Yes? Put in zero or one or something. You can you can do change in table by point one or one. It doesn't matter. The bottom line, it, one is fine. We counted by ones, didn't we? Over here, when we would have put zero to nine, we would have put in zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's enough ordered pairs to graph. Okay, find some ordered pairs and graph it from zero to nine. Notice the table will allow you to find other values. 
but you graph the xy ordered pairs. So one of the endpoints at zero was what? Zero, two. And then it goes to two. No, it goes to two, four is the next nice ordered pair. I'm just skipping around a little bit. Three, it's at like four and a half. Okay, if you scroll down. The other end point is at 9. When t is 9, the ordered pair is 4.55. Okay, so we got this little curve going this way that ends there, but the directional arrows were that way. Yep, it calculated from 0 to 9, yes, because that's what we put in. So, yes. All right, one more thing I need you to look at. Will you go to trace? What do you see when you see trace? You see a T, an X, and a Y all calculated on your screen, yes? If you arrow to the right, they all change. If you arrow to the left, what happens when you get to zero? It won't go further to the left because you have defined this only between zero and nine, okay? If you go to second trace, boop, we no longer have max, min, anything. All we can calculate is a value of t. Everything else here is calculus. So if we hit enter, we can put in a value of t. I could put in 4.05 and it would find it. But I can't do anything outside of plug in a value for t. I can't find a specific value of x or y. So a lot of the answers we do later are going to be estimates. All right, I want to get to the fun stuff. So let's do these real quick. We need to get this in y equals form for number three. So what are we going to solve and substitute? Yeah, get t by itself here. And how will that look? And then we're going to put all that into this one. So it'll say y equals x minus 3 over 2 minus 4. Now, I guess I would accept that, but that's really linear, right? There's no squared or anything, so can we simplify that a little bit so it looks like the equation of a line? Um, yeah, it says we still want it in y equals form, so it's 1 half x minus 3 halves minus 4, which is 1 half x minus 5.5 or 1 half x minus 11 halves any way you want to write it, but that looks a little bit more like a line, right? This one we don't have to mess around with too much. What do we get over here? Can you try that one on your own? What'd you get? Whoops, no T. That would be the whole point. And that's already a parabola in vertex form, okay? So that would be a perfectly good way to leave that one. Any questions? All right, moving on to the fun. This is on the back of your pink sheet. Can you go to the back of your pink sheet? It is related to this equation. We talked about this at the beginning of class. Uh, and I still can't write it. Remember I talked about that? Okay. It is related to that, but this time we're going to use the idea almost of a vector component, which is the next thing we're going to study. But we're going to use the fact that x is related to the cosine of this angle that's forcing it this way. So we have x equals t times the initial velocity times the cosine of the angle. This is what's a little bit confusing. This one says y equals t initial velocity times the sine of the angle, which is related to y. Sine and y kind of go together, yes. 
But this part where it says minus one half G, will you write a little note on your pink sheet? We're just gonna use 16. It's gonna be minus 16 T squared, as long as we're in feet per second. It would be negative 9.8 if we were in meters per second, but you don't even really need to write that down. There's only one question on the homework in the book that uses meters per second. You, the one half is taken care of when you do that, okay? One half G is just gone. It's gonna be negative 16 T squared right in there. We'll talk more about that when we finish this section on Thursday. But for today, what happened to all my fun? I read to this question this morning. Oh, I don't know what happened. All right, I did this question this morning because I didn't want to have to take time to do this one with you. It looks like this. Okay. This is a question. It says, Kaylee's pr practicing free throws for an upcoming basketball game. She releases the ball with an initial velocity of 24. So I put that in where it said V sub zero and all these equations. Angle of 53 degrees, everything. There was a theta. I put in a 53. Initial height, she threw it when it was 4.75 feet above the ground. So I put that in for the initial height. Then I put it in the calculator. I estimated that it, she would hit, it would hit the ground within five seconds. Okay, you're gonna have to estimate a T value this time. Then I traced along, cause it says the front of the rim is 13 feet away. I traced, I can't move anything except the T. So I traced along until I got X to be 13 feet away. How high was the ball at 13 feet away? Can you see that? Anybody who's up front see what that says? It says it's nine feet, right? Right there? At 13, it's nine feet up in the air. Well, it says the front of the rim, the vertical distance from the floor to the rim is 10 feet. Okay, so 10 feet up in the air is the basket. Her ball is nine feet up in the air. Is she gonna hit the rim? Is it gonna go in? No, she shot an air ball, okay? We're going to try to figure out what's going on with this question. We've got lots of things we can figure out. It says Luigi's kicking a soccer ball. He kicks the ball with an initial velocity of 35, so that's our V sub zero. At an angle of 48 degrees, that's our theta. The ball is two feet above the ground when he kicks it. That's our H sub zero. Now, I don't have the equations written here, but they're on your pink sheet, right? What does it say for X? T times V sub zero, which is 35, times cosine of the angle. And you would need to be in degree mode, but we already took care of that, I hope. All right, now Y sub T is on the sheet. We are using feet, this was feet per second, so we're gonna go with 16 when we get there. But how does the equation start on your sheet? V sub zero again times the sine of the angle. Then what? Minus 16 T squared plus the initial height, which was two for this question. All right, let's type it in. Uh, we probably should have talked about the window first because you'll all be distracted, but. Okay, make sure you're in X because I tried typing them in the wrong spot earlier and that messed up. T 35 cosine 48. And the next one is T 35 sine 48, close parenthesis minus 16 T squared plus two. Okay, it doesn't give us a window. 
We need to think about the application. What is T standing for in this question? Time. How long till the ball is going to hit the ground, you think? I think 20 seconds, a minute. You think a ball would stay in the air 20 seconds or a minute? It's a soccer ball. Okay, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. I don't think a ball stays in the air very long. I'll put five. It's really too much. It's only like two, but okay. How far away do you think this ball is going to go? 50? Okay, we'll go with 50 feet. Okay. A story is 10 feet. How high do you think the ball goes? Okay, we'll do 20. How's that? Just to make sure. All right. Worst case scenario, if you made T too small, the ball would be left hanging in the middle of the air and you'd know I need to go a little further, okay? If you make T too big, it's going to take your calculator forever to try to graph it. So it's better to start with a small T. If you can't see it in your window, then you need to change your X and Y. All right, type this in real fast. 0 to 5 by 0 0.1, 0 to 50 by 1, 0 to 20. Graph. Hey, that's looking pretty good. We picked well. Everybody okay? Anybody's not working? Okay, go back to your y equals. Katie, can you maybe see if you can spot what she... Do you got it? Okay. It's usually something you typed in wrong, but if you need help, let me know and I'll come over there. All right, Trace. There was a question asked. First, it says, how far will the ball travel horizontally before it hits the ground? Okay, find the time it hits the ground and then determine the horizontal position. How do you find the time it hits the ground? What are we aiming for? We can't find an intersection. What do we want to be zero? The height, which is y. So we want the y value to be zero. So all we can do is trace along here until we can get y as close to zero as possible. I got a negative 0 0.02. That seems like a pretty much zero, right? right? So how long did it take to get there? 1.7. And how far away from us was it? 39.8, right? That's the, everybody's okay that X would be this way, right? And Y would be up and down and time is T. All right. So we have 39.8 feet away, roughly at 1.7 seconds. Did you forget the plus two at the end? That's what I did first. It isn't tracing right. Anybody figure out how high the ball went at any point? How did well, how did you decide to that that was the answer? Um you would divide the x by 2, and that would tell you the x distance to the highest peak, and then you could find the y. Yeah, we're just going to trace around. <laughs> find the highest y value. What is the highest y ever got? About 12.6. And this is the kind of question that I love. Will, a, will it clear a 6-foot defender standing 35 feet away? What are you going to do? You want to trace until it's close to what? X equals 35 as you can get. Okay. 
If you wanted to try to get closer to x equals 35, it would happen a little sooner than this. So you could try like 1.48. You could try values of t, but you don't need to do that, okay? Somewhere in here, it's 35 feet away. And are they clearing a six foot tall person? If I put in 1.49, I get about 35 and it's 5.2 feet in the air. I'm, I'm thinking it's hitting him right in the face, right? Or back of the head or something. So yeah, he's going to head it back to you. So this is no, it will not clear. All right. We got about three minutes left. I would like you to try this one. How far away will it land and how much time before it lands? Unless someone has a question about something for tomorrow's quiz. <laughs> yes, we have the quiz tomorrow that looks like worksheet 11 and 12. It's about 15 questions, okay? It's on all the different kinds of conics writing equations and eccentricity it looks just like worksheet 11 and 12. I think the same window will work, which is part of the reason I can be lazy and ask you to do this in two minutes, because I don't think you have to change the window. You can do the last one if you get this one done, because you don't have to change the window for that one either. This one is the ball landing again. And somewhere around 25. It's <laughs> trying to get close to zero. It's about 25 fish feet, 25.2. As long as you're close, I'll be fine. And how much time? What did it else did it ask? Time around 1.6 seconds. All right. All right. So tonight you need to be ready for the homework check and the quiz tomorrow. And then you can start working on this page 469 tomorrow night. Unless you're ahead of the game and then you can work on it tonight.